Today's going to be a good day of fishing, regardless of what ends up happening. But I am not off to a good start at all. <laughs> I want to fish like around the corner. So the river comes over here and then it flows this way and then back around that way. And I want to be on the other side, but I can't get onto this bridge at all. And it doesn't look like I'm going to be allowed to cross the bridge either because all the city workers and stuff is just posted all here. And the reason that I want to go on the other side is there's a fishing spot where I know for a fact that there is gar in the water. And so today's goal was to catch some gar today. And uh, <laughs> it's just, I kind of lost the, uh, the opportunity and uh, ability to catch some gar now. There probably is other spots that I could fish right here on this side. I should be able to catch some catfish and maybe even uh, carp here, but I'm not seeing any activity at all. And I usually do. I can try this right here. So this right here is a small creek. So I'll, let's, let's try the creek. So this river I know has gar, carp, catfish, white bass, flatheads, sheephead. They're also known as like freshwater drum. It would be cool to be able to catch a freshwater drum here, but I'm targeting gar, but I don't know if they're here. And I'm not seeing any activity. Normally you can tell if there's gar or not in the water. This might just end up being a complete like bust, but I'll show the video anyways, because people need to see this side of fishing. You don't always have success with fishing. But the best thing about fishing is the fact that you don't need to catch any fish to have fun or enjoy yourself. That's the greatest thing about fishing. Got a bunch of worms on the hook and uh, yeah, let's cast out and see if I can catch something. I already have a great place to put my rod. <laughs> There's another one right over here. I'm not going to cast too far. I'm going to cast right here. Yeah, it's not that deep right here. It's probably like five feet. Okay, set this down, set my rod down and just wait. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Nothing much that I can do today really, except this. So I'm expecting to catch absolutely nothing today. But if I do catch something, it'll be exciting. It'll be a lot of fun. But uh, it's 721 right now. Um, I'm going to fish Oh, no way. Am I already having a nibble? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, no way. Oh, my God. <laughs> I wasn't expecting anything. Oh, my God. Okay. How am I going to do this? No way. Okay. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Dude, no way. No way. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Holy crap. Wasn't expecting anything to hit so quickly. Got myself a carp. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. It's just flipping around. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, pop it in the bucket. I'm gonna smack its head because it's not gonna be very comfortable in this bucket with no water. Let's find a good stick. This is a good stick. All right, so oh, put it out of its misery quick right here. Oh, that was it. 
Holy crap, it stopped moving completely. Okay, we're good. Just humanely dispatching it. That's what you gotta do. Pull it up, smack its head, and uh, the meat stays a lot more fresh, I believe. But dang, this is a perfect stick. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it. Seriously, holy crap. Like, what the hell? Totally was not expecting to catch anything. I was, and definitely not a carp. I wasn't expecting a carp. <laughs> And that was a nice size one too. This is a perfect size to eat. You notice how I pulled this saw out just on, almost out of nowhere? I always, I always have this in my pocket. These pants that I normally wear, I always have it in this pocket right here. <laughs> Let's see if I need a rebate and cast back out then. Nope, don't need a rebate, just need to cast out. Oh. This Carolina rig setup will actually catch multiple species, but I suppose carp is going to be the, the main one that I end up catching. There you go. Well, that was one fish. That means today is a success. I'm pretty much set. If I don't catch anything else for the next like hour or so, I'd still be fine. Well, that's it. I'm going home. Only got the carp and I'm satisfied with that. All right, let's clean this carp. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty simple. I've done this many times. I've showed it many times. I scale it just with my fingers like this. I just go like this and I just run my fingers down its body here like this, right underneath the scales, just like that. And the scales just all pop off. These scales could actually be saved and cooked down to extract the collagen in it. And then you'll be able to use that broth with the collagen to make some sort of jello. And it's actually really good. I personally haven't done that with fish scales before but i know it can be done and i'm not really interested in doing that today but i'll find time to catch another carp and do it i'm gonna clip off the fins i've also got a metal spoon like this and i'm gonna use that to scrape the rest of the scales off and to clean it up a little bit more there you go, see? All right, time to gut it. Right through the vent here at the bottom and just cut up. I usually use my spoon like this to scrape the inside to get anything else out here, especially the blood. So I won't be keeping the head on this one here today. So I'm just gonna break it off like this and uh, I'm just gonna throw into the fire just for the hell of it. There you go. Yeah, right here. Just throw it in, just for fun. I don't plan on eating it. <laughs> I have the fire going right here to keep the mosquitoes away. But I'm gonna be chopping this into pieces, boiling it, and only eating it with some fish sauce. That way it's easier for me to compare this carp with all the other fish that I've been eating with just fish sauce. So boiling it and then fish sauce, that's it. All right, I have everything here, let's get started. I got all the fish chopped up into pieces like this. This right here is the belly section and part of the tail section. Otherwise, the rest, I'm actually going to make a curry. This is a Vietnamese curry blend. I actually think that this is based off of like Indian curry because this is incredibly good. It's very, very good. I have a very strong opinion on Japanese curry and it's not a good opinion. <laughs> Japanese curry, in my opinion, isn't good. It's horrible. It tastes terrible. Like it ruins the dish when you put Japanese curry on anything. Like I've, like I've had omu rice uh, before at a restaurant and there was a standard version and then there was a curry version. And I opted for the curry version because that's what I see online all the time. And uh, I already knew that I didn't like Japanese curry, but I still tried it anyways. And yeah, that curry ruined the omu rice and uh, it wasn't good. Yeah, it's terrible. Like I've tried my best to 
like enjoy Japanese curry and they just don't do it right. The powder versions that they have, they also have like the, those cubes that you can buy. And yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. So this right here, I don't know if it's exactly like true Vietnamese curry or anything like that, but this is a Vietnamese brand, but I think this is based off of Indian curry and Indian curry is the best curry in my opinion. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm not gonna make like a soupy curry. It's just going to be seasoned with the curry powder. So it's just a really nice loose powder like this. All right, there you go. See, just like this. All right, so I'm just gonna let it sit in the powder like this for a while and then I'll cook it up later. All right, let's get started. There you go. This is my anodized aluminum Dutch oven. This is the same sort of pot that Clay Hayes brought on season eight of Alone, I believe. I think it was season eight, but Clay Hayes was the season winner. This was the pot that he brought along and I thought it was really cool. And it's super lightweight, it's anodized aluminum. And so there's a nice coating on the outside of it to prevent any of the aluminum from leaching into the food and poisoning you essentially. So this is anodized, it's really cool. So here's some water. And there you go, let's boil up the water. The lid will help it boil faster. <laughs> oh, it's gotten pretty hot. This should work. It doesn't really need to be boiling, but this heats up the water much faster because there's so much surface area. That's what I like about this. Let's pop this in and that in. Normally I would throw in some green onions and ginger, but today I'm just gonna leave it like this. The scallions and ginger usually sort of absorb or mask the fishiness, but I don't wanna do that today. Oh, wow. This is uh, <laughs> a roaring boil now. <laughs> this video has taken me like a week to produce. From the start of it when I caught the fish and then just keeping it in the cooler, processing it, and then actually finally cooking it. All of this has taken about a week or two. <laughs> I don't even remember anymore. A lot of my videos nowadays, I don't complete the entire video uh, in one day anymore. Usually it takes several days of filming and then I kind of piece everything together. But I am preparing for a very big event around the shed here. I'm getting a pig and I've mentioned this on my TikTok already. But right now, I don't even know what I'm going to be doing. I don't have anything really planned out just yet. <laughs> All I know is I want the pig. I'm gonna go get it and I'm gonna bring it back here. And that's all I know so far. <laughs> I've been cleaning up, I've been getting things ready kind of, you know, but I don't really have a, uh, a proper plan and that's okay. Because if I am always stuck in the planning phase, I'll never get anything done and, or, and I will never even get started. So like, I'm gonna just focus on the getting started part for now. And then I'll figure things out as I go. And uh, hopefully I'll just make mistakes that I can learn from and uh, figure things out and then probably do better next time. So yeah, getting a pig. <laughs> right, I'm turning this off. It's very nice. All right, let's get this over, this over. So here's the meat before I put the sauce over it. It has a pretty tan color, I believe. I'm not sure, like the camera uh, monitor, it looks like it's kind of grayish, but to me, it doesn't look gray really. The meat looks like a tan color, almost like a, a white fish color also. It's not that white, but it smells really good and it looks good too. It looks like good meat. This right here is sort of like the darker meat near like sort of like their lateral line or something, I think. But yeah, it looks good. Let's get started and eat. I'm gonna flip the lid over like that. And I'm gonna use this as a platform. <laughs> there you go, that works. Here's my chili sauce. So all this is, is fish sauce and chili peppers. That's all it is. I don't do anything else with it. So. Use, if you want to make this, just use your favorite chili peppers 
and then throw in your fish sauce. Um, it could be any anything. I personally use Red Boat fish sauce. And the reasoning behind that is because it doesn't have MSG and sugar, which I personally think isn't strong enough when you put it on meat and stuff because uh, this fish has liquid on it. And so when you put the sauce over it, it's gonna dilute the sauce a little bit. And so using red boat fish sauce is better because all it is is just anchovies and salt. There you go. Mm, this looks good. And you might think that this is a lot, but it's actually not that much because, because it just kind of coats the outside and everything on the inside is still pretty much just plain. All right, let's dig in. There you go. It's like this. Nice belly section here like this. This is the boneless section. Never mind. <laughs> I literally I literally grabbed into the Y bone section. But holy crap, the meat, the meat is really good. Oh man. See, I do not get it at all. Like, I don't know why people hate carp so badly. Everyone who hates carp either it, it, like is eating carp from really, really muddy like waters, like in the south or something, or they just have never had carp before and they're just kind of going off of what everyone else says, like a sheep. <laughs> this is amazing. Like I've eaten carp many other times in the past. Never had an issue. <clears throat> See, there's a lot of bones, but the, the meat is good. It's soft, like it's, it's soft and it's tender, but it's not mushy. Like I don't like um, crappie because I feel like crappie sometimes gets too mushy. Like it's flaky, but at the same time, sometimes it's just too mushy and it's just not good to, to me. <clears throat> but crappie is still good to eat. But like this, this is like a soft meat. Let me see if I can show you or demonstrate. I'm not sure if I can. Like this is the belly section. It's really good. Oh my God, see, see how the meat looks? The meat is really good. It's almost like salmon meat, but softer. <clears throat> and like, I guess there is some fishiness to it, but it's very subtle. And I don't think it would really put anyone off to this meat. And the fish sauce right now is enhancing it somewhat also. It's like bringing out more of the flavor. You get like a subtle, sweetness from the meat. There's some fattiness too in the belly section, which is absolutely amazing. And with the skin on, it's even fattier too. And you get this uh, additional sort of layer of flavor to it, which I think is very good. Only thing is I think the issue is that it has a lot of bones. But man, this is a fantastic fish to eat. Yeah, like I don't even know what to say, like convince people to try this out other than just telling people to try it out for yourselves. Like if you have honestly tried to eat carp and you disliked it because it tasted muddy or bad or mushy or something like that, it, it very possibly could be the carp that you're eating in your particular area. Because this is carp that I caught in the Minnesota River. And uh, I have had no problems eating any of the carp in the Minnesota River. Or in like lakes even. Or anywhere in Minnesota for that matter. All the carps that I have caught in the past and eaten has always been this good. 
There's absolutely no reason to hate this fish. I don't know why people call it a trash fish. Like, sure, uh, uh, like it has a mouth, like I have heard this where like it has a mouth where it opens up sort of below, you know, it opens up below. And so it's eating the stuff at the bottom. It's a bottom feeder. But I mean, if that doesn't really matter, does it? People eat catfish. Catfish is kind of like that also. Even though I am getting like a mouthful of bones every time I'm eating like a chunk of meat, it, it's still really good. It's not that bad though, because I'm used to eating fish with bones anyways. It kind of disrupts the eating process because you have to stop and remove bones from your mouth. But I mean, that's not that big a deal for me. And I can totally understand, you know, for other people, if they don't like that, I totally understand. And that's okay. But don't call it a trash fish if you haven't tried it for yourself. And if you did try it and it was bad, give it another shot in a different area. So I'm gonna save this for now and I'm gonna cook up the curry one. There you go, a lot of butter. So here's the curry carp, pop it in. I'm gonna lower the heat and I'm just gonna cover it up. Let it kind of cook like that. All right, this is really nice. <laughs> so ever since I got this like Chef Master portable butane stove, uh, I really love it. I love cooking like this. It's so much easier than getting a fire started. Although I do enjoy getting a fire started, it's just, this is a lot faster. All you need to do is pop the butane in and then you just turn the knob and it lights and it just starts and then you can just cook over it and it heats up very fast too. I know my brand is like bushcraft, you know, but and, and that I should be making a fire more often, but this is so much nicer <laughs> and faster. I'm gonna pour in a little bit of water. There you go, the lid back on. Ooh. Oh, wow. Holy crap, this looks really good. Especially like this right here. Look how it's like soft that looks. Ooh, see, and it's just breaking apart too. I'm not gonna grab everything. So I'm just gonna grab the tail here and a little piece of the belly section over here. There you go. So here's the meat. You can see the belly. Otherwise, here's the tail piece. Let me see if I can break it. There you go. All right, so let's give this a try now with the curry. Mm. Oh my God, see? This is phenomenal. So good. See, this is good curry. Like this is good, good curry. It smells really good and it tastes good too. All the spices kind of working together and it, it enhances the meat. Mm. And the skin is really good too and nice and fatty. Meat is tender. Perfect seasoning. This is a perfect seasoning for this. It blows my mind why this fish is so hated by people. It really is like amazing. It really is crazy. <laughs> people do not know what they're talking about. So after tasting it pretty plain with just the fish sauce and then eating it like this also, I have to say that I like eating this more than pike, more than Northern pike because both of them have Y bones and they both have somewhat a lot of bones in them. I think I think the uh, Northern Pike has a little less bones, I guess, and you don't need to deal with them. It's easier to find like the boneless pieces uh, in the meat. Because even with like this, I feel like it's hard to figure out if I have a boneless piece or not. Because when I, when I think I pulled out all the bones, 
I take a bite of it, I still get a bone in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. But man, this is so good. I want to catch more carp. Like, this is really good. I can't say that enough. I don't know how I can convince you that carp is good, except for just telling you this constantly. Or, and I am hoping that this video, like, shows you that. And carp is amazing. It might depend on where you're catching it, though. It might. Like, that's something that I don't know. I've never caught and eaten a carp anywhere else besides Minnesota. So, people who hate on carp might be right. Who knows? But my opinion on carp right now, based off my experience, that is, it's, it's absolutely amazing. All right, so that's my video. I appreciate you watching. Thank you for your support. I couldn't do any of this without your support, so I really appreciate it. <clears throat> Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Check out all my other videos. Consider checking out my spread shop. It's where I sell all my merch. So yeah, I really appreciate you watching. So I'll see you next time. Peace out.